is an objection or there's actually a fallacy that you hear in our societies every day. We are told that there are good people who don't necessarily believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take an atheist as an example. This atheist may appear to have a good heart. He may have good deeds. He could be a generous person who loves humanity. What about them? What will happen from them? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their deeds? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them on the day of judgment or no? Since they have some good actions, since sometimes they have some good intentions. What happens with these people? This is a common question that we are asked in our society and that runs across our minds. To give you an example of why it is very important to form the correct belief system in order for us to deserve the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as we learn from the Quran and from the lessons of Ahlul Bayt, only those who form the correct belief system, they deserve and have the right to receive the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those with incorrect beliefs, Allah is merciful. <coughs> he can choose from His own mercy, He can decide to give them from His reward. But they are not deserving of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that they don't have a right to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, you have to give me the reward for my actions because Allah will tell them, you did not believe in me in the first place nor did you believe in my reward in the second place. So you have no right over me. Whereas the believer, he has a right on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be rewarded because Allah has promised the believers to reward them. Let me share with you a couple of examples to demonstrate why a person who does not form the, cor the correct belief system does not have a right on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask for a reward. Imagine if you want to have a house built for you here in Halifax. You go to a construction company and you sign a contract. You give them the specifications of this house and they are to build this house and you promise them, you sign a contract. At the end, I'll give you $600,000 for building this house. Now what happens is after you sign the contract, the construction company instead of building a house here in Halifax, they misunderstand the contract or they misread the contract or for whatever reason, they go and build that house in Winnipeg. What happens here? This construction company could be, could be a good company with a good reputation. They could have the best intentions. But at the end of the day, did they do what you wanted or no? Are you going to pay them 600000 or no? If you're generous, you can give them something because they worked hard. But at the end of the day, they have no right to get the reward from you, to get the price from you. Why? Because the contract was that you build the house in Halifax, not in Winnipeg, not in some other city. Because that's not what I asked you for. That's not what I commissioned you to do. A second example. Imagine if there's this important document or package you give it to a courier or you give it to a mail person or to a ca taxi cab. And you tell them, I want you to deliver this package to an address in Toronto. Now they take this package and they misunderstand what you said or they forget about what you said. And they mistakenly, with good intentions of course, we're assuming that this person has good inten intentions. They mistakenly take it to Montreal and deliver it to a house there. At the end of the day, did this person achieve what you asked him to do? Did he fulfill the job? Did he fulfill the responsibility or no? It's the same with belief systems, brothers and sisters. Yes, we do recognize there are people who may have good intentions. But if they had the chance to see the truth and accept the truth and they didn't, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the day, on the day of judgment, Allah will tell them, you did not do what I asked you. You did something else, even if you may had some good intentions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not obligated to reward them. 
He may reward them if he wants from his mercy. Allah will tell him, look, I'm not obligated to reward you because at the end of the day, you did not fulfill what I asked you. You did not believe in the beliefs that I asked you. But because I am merciful, I can either give you a reward. I can either reduce the punishment. We have many narrations that state those unbelievers who don't recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, if they had any good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay them back in the form of reducing their punishment. That's one way of Allah having mercy on them. The belief system is extremely important. When I have a belief system that is taken from Allah, it's fixed, it has value. Those who do not, do not recognize Allah or they don't take their moral principles from their creator, then their actions, their belief system, even their intentions were not, will not have that full value. Because anything which is not fixed does not have that full value. Anything which is fixed, you can depend on, it does not change, it has value. 